Hello and welcome. Today we are in a very wet but equally beautiful location in Oxfordshire, more specifically Feathered Nest, where we will be driving the all new Volkswagen Tiguan for a first UK drive. VW have also brought along the all new Passat and the facelifted T-Cross, but we're here for the drive of the Tiguan. But I'm gonna tell you more from the car because this rain isn't letting up and I'm getting very wet. So I'll see you guys in the car. After a quick morning coffee and breakfast, we had a short briefing from the VW team telling us about the 50 years of golf, their success over the last 12 months, and the new MQB platform, which we'll get into a little bit later on. After the briefing, we were told which cars were available for us to drive, but as I mentioned, there was only one that jumped off the page for me, the Tiguan, for three reasons. Firstly, because it's VW's best seller globally, which makes it a very important member of the lineup. So we'll see if it lives up to its reputation. Secondly, I've gravitated to this the most out of all the other cars because I'm not a great lover of estates. I much prefer a mid-size SUV, as I find it presents itself as a very good solution as a family car when it comes to comfort, safety, practicality, and day-to-day -day usability. Third and final reason is for my own selfish reasons because our GLC is soon to be renewed and I don't think our budget is gonna stretch to another Mercedes. So I thought I would test out the Tiguan as a potential candidate for a replacement to the GLC. The Tiguan will be available in five trims. The Tiguan, which is the entry level, life, match elegance and as seen here the r-line which is the one we're driving today it's sporty aggressive and thanks to a bolder and larger front bumper there's a look of confidence about it it kind of looks like it has its chest pumped out the benefits of all this is that if you want a car but aren't particularly fussed about the trim you can save yourself lots of money by going for an entry level car prices for the entry level trim start from just over thirty-four thousand pounds the rear of the Tiguan is equally bold with the light bar stretching along the rear. There'll be nine colors to choose from, along with a few wheel options. Now, the good thing about this model is that if you did want to put any larger bulkier items, which needed you to remove the parcel shelf, it tucks away, says he, albeit with some jiggery pokery, hides away. That are uh, the seats folded forward using these levers. You've got acres and acres worth of space. It's nice that VW have kept some of the really good touches, really nice touches that we saw on the previous generation. And they're little things, but for example, a 12 volt socket here in the boot if you needed to take a mini fridge, for example. And as well, this little lever that comes out, not only in the latest model does it act as a hook so you can hang your shopping, but as well, if you wanted to keep this held up, it acts as a little stopper and then you can comfortably put whatever it is you want in and out of the underneath of the boot. Since there is no battery in this model, there is some underboot storage for bits and bobs. And if you have young children, you'll know all about the bits and bobs. Just like the outgoing model, the rear bench can slide backwards and forwards, foregoing some knee space in exchange for additional inches in the boot. The center of the rear bench can be lowered for your extra long items and the seats can be folded down in a 60-40 split, as well as all the way down. With the removable parcel shelf and the lid to the boot floor, you have yourself a little minivan. Right, so let's discuss some of the new features of the interior. Having had a go in the VW ID range not so long ago, it's very clear to see that this is where the influence has come from. But also it's worth mentioning this is the new architecture of VW's MQB platform, which means that moving forward, this is where all the VW's, small or large, will stem from. So this is sort of the layout that we can expect now and moving forward. And there are some very welcome additions. For example, the steering wheel has gone old school and the highly sought after physical buttons have now made a comeback for one last encore. The 15 inch touchscreen in the center console is very much the main event. Put that into context, I have a 14 inch MacBook Pro which has a smaller screen than the one found in this model. However, unlike the ID models, there is more going on in the center console here. It just looks like more thought has gone into this center console than the ones that we saw in the ID. For example, we've got a bit of storage here which lifts up and that gives you access to two lots of wireless charge pads so you and the passenger can charge your phones. But as well, there is two Type-C so if you did want a physical connection, you can do that. Back here, we've got a couple of cup holders, which is sort of behind the driver. I guess it would have been 
maybe better if it was a bit further forward, but you can store two drinks here. You've got a 12 volt socket, and this, what looks like a lid to the storage unit, actually acts as an arm rest, so you can lift that up, position it up, so when you're driving, you can get a little bit more comfortable. And down here, you've got a little bit more storage, and you've got these sort of modular bits that you can dictate how much room you want. So if you want three lots of smaller spaces or just one large space, you can do that by simply removing these parts. Or if you have a large drink, you can stop them from facing that way to that way, and you can put a larger drink. Up here is where the gear lever is situated. Now, this is very familiar to me because this is exactly where it is in the GLC. The only difference being is that in the GLC, you push it down to go forward and up to go backwards, whereas in this, you flip it forwards to go into drive and then downwards to go into reverse but two are the same, and then you've got your P button at the end of the stalk once you're done driving. Down here is our engine start stop button, and I feel like there's a small opportunity missed here because next to it, we've got this beautifully designed driver experience switch, which when you put your hand near it, it wakes up, and its default go-to program is your volume. So you can control the volume of whatever you're listening to, and you press it down, and then it gives you the different driving modes. And then next to it is where the start stop button is and it just looks a little bit sorry for itself because it doesn't look as glamorous as the switch now imagine when you got in the car that was like red illuminated red and it said engine start stop on it and you press that engine starts and then it goes to your volume switch Volkswagen for the facelift you're welcome some of the standard equipment in a T1 consists of alloy wheels DAB radio automatic headlights multi-function steering wheel two USB Type-C ports, as we saw, a 12.9 inch infotainment screen, a digital cockpit, Bluetooth, parking sensors at the back, as well as the front, including a reversing camera, plenty of driving gates like lane assist, speed warning, attention monitor, and drowsiness monitor. This being the R line and therefore the top of the range when it comes to the trim levels, has the optional heads up display, keyless entry, ambient lighting, up to 30 colors, dynamic headlights, heated massaging seats, as well as larger alloy wheels. The one that we're driving today has a 1.5 litre force in the petrol engine with a very mild hybrid. It's nothing to write home about because none of that electric power or the battery is big enough to actually drive the vehicle. It's more of an aid to the petrol engine in order to give it a bit more power and maximise efficiency. However, soon there will be a plug-in hybrid version available with a 19.7 kilowatt hour battery and Volkswagen claim that that will give you a range of about 80 miles in the city and closer to 70 miles in a combined cycle, which in my opinion is ample. So that is definitely one to keep an eye on because 70, 80 mile range from a hybrid for me is perfect. Considering the average commute for a family is going to be 20 to 30 miles a day that will give you plenty of range to drive the car fully in electric but you know when the time comes that you want to take your kids your family to the seaside and you need that extra bit of range then you don't need to worry about having to find a charge point you can run the car as a hybrid so it will use electric and combustion engine but if you run out of electricity you needn't worry you can just drive on the combustion engine one of the first things I noticed getting into the new Tiguan is that it feels a lot bigger. I don't remember the Tiguan being this big. And I know that cars are always getting bigger as years go by. This is probably not too far off the first Touareg that, that we saw. But for me personally, I welcome that. I like the spaciousness. I like the comfort factor. I love the practicality that these sorts of SUVs offer. So for me, that's definitely a positive. And it's made the Tiguan feel a lot more grown up. It's probably as big as the GLC that we're currently driving, but on the inside, it definitely feels a little bit more spacious, a little bit more airy. Everything's grown, the steering wheel, the instrument cluster, the screens, the windows, the mirrors, everything is nice and large and bulky, which I think a lot of people will appreciate. Whether you go for the petrol mild hybrid or the diesel, in both variants you get 150 brake horsepower, which for most will be enough. For me, it's probably just teetering on the edge of just about. I think any less, it's gonna struggle at the moment. 
I'm alone in the car and I put my foot down. And not a lot really happens. I don't think the engine particularly likes being pushed. The acceleration is very gradual as opposed to punchy and pokey, but for the average person driving this class of car, I don't think it poses much of an issue. The only thing that is somewhat surprising is that the Tiguan isn't available as full motion, as VW call it, all wheel drive. Whether we see one in the future remains to be seen, but then again, I don't see a lot of Tiguan owners taking their cars off road. Something else I'm not entirely convinced by is a car of this caliber needing a drive mode consisting of comfort, sport and individual. I barely use it in mine and most drivers probably won't. Perhaps a city or motorway drive mode might be a better option to provide. 0 to 62 miles an hour comes up in 9.1 seconds. It has a top speed of 130 miles an hour and is only available with the 7 speed DSG gearbox. So how do you build on a recipe which already has served VW so well since its creation in the early 2000s? So I guess you want to keep what works really well compact, SUV, practical, safe, comfortable, all the good stuff. And regards to everything else, I think it's just, you gotta try and play it as safe as you can, but at the same time, you have to be seen to be pushing the envelope. So I would say it's marginal gains that's gonna make the Tiguan last. And last it will. To reward the Tiguan for its long-standing service and sales performance, the bosses at VW have promised the Tiguan name lives on. This choice of engine will be satisfactory for most. The diesel, I don't mind it. I still drive a diesel, though I'm aware that it scares a lot of people. And I know the price will be a factor, but the plug-in hybrid for me will be the pick of the bunch. A couple of likes and dislikes from our first impressions. The reversing camera, it's large enough. The quality just isn't there for me, I think they could do with a little upgrade. And the air conditioning unit, this is something that I spoke about in the ID video that I've done. It's all touch sensitive along here. I mean, look, don't get me wrong, it works fine. You slide your finger left to right to go colder or warmer and the volume's the same and you've got physical buttons on the steering wheel for volume, so that's less of an issue. But for example, driving at the moment, there's a lot of glare on this plastic trim because it's shiny. So it's hard for me to keep my eyes on the road and understand what's going on and what I need to do down there. For example, where it's miserable outside, a few times it's gotten a bit misty here and I've had to work my way into the air conditioning unit to try and find it. I have since found it, it's on the far left here, right? it says max, which will demist your windows. But again, for crucial buttons like that where you just need to get to it with a snap of a finger, it just it could do with some physical buttons just below the screen down here and it, it it just be a lovely lovely touch in terms of likes it's very comfortable the seats are great i think they look great and they're very supportive as well the massaging function is a lovely touch to have the interior as a whole for the most part it's a very nice place to be it's clutter free and it and with design, sometimes you really need to see the new in order to appreciate what you've been missing. What I mean is, the old one didn't, it looked relatively plain, but it didn't look dated. And now that you see this, and then you look at the older car, and suddenly think, hmm, that looks a bit dated. Driving position is lovely, visibility is great, mirrors, windows, we touched on earlier, really nice and large. And I quite like the instrument cluster. It's highly configurable, and as well, you've got various different modes. So you can have a lot of information, you can have it a bit more subtle, where you just see like the essentials, if you like. You can view various different things. For example, if you go to the right, you can have driving time, distance, average speed, navigation, audio, telephone, compass, destination info. You can have it either to the right or to the left of your speedo, which is quite nice. I enjoyed that. And finally, the screen, 15 inch, the tablet style screen in the T1 is absolutely massive. And what's good following on from that is that all the tiles, so when you click on the little menu button up here, are colorful and they're big and bold. So I've always been overcritical about touch screens when you wanna adjust something whilst driving because it requires a lot of eye to hand coordination to be able to find what you're looking for and actually input the right thing. 
But in this, it's the lesser of two evils. It's nice and bold, colourful, blocky, and the response time to your input is quite good. On the top of the screen here, you can set a few favourites. So if there's anything that you feel like you might want regular access to or you might need quick access to, you can put those up here. So while you are driving, if there's anything you feel like you need to adjust very quickly, for example, the mood, you can do so by creating a shortcut just up there. If you're coming out of an earlier model of a Tiguan going into this one, I think what you'll really enjoy is the familiarity with everything. Even the little pocket at the back of the seat remains. And I think the key thing to take away here is that there's been tiny little changes made everywhere to make the Tiguan better all around, if that makes sense. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, found it informative, useful, or at least a little bit entertaining. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Consider subscribing as well, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Oh, Tiguan, did you know that the TI in Tiguan is for tiger, and Iguan is for iguana? Tiguan, Tiguana. I think they should have gone all the way to Tiguana, though. What do you drive? I drive a Tiguana. Has a nice ring to it. Anyways, yeah. See you guys in the next one.